And you know, I have stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. We appreciate everybody who is still listening to us. Thank you to those folks that are listening to us on TuneIn. Thank you to those folks that are listening to the replays right now on YouTube. It's because of you guys that we continue to do this show. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J live every single Monday night from 7 p.m. until we finish talking. And of course, joining us now in her usual perch right across the table from me, my big sis, as well as my co host. We got her in the building, and y'all know her as S. Why, Butler? What's up, baby? What's up, baby? How you doing? I'm good. How y'all? <laughs> you doing all right? <laughs> yeah. you, you doing good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm well. so happy to see Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm here. Oh well, it's good gosh. to have her. It's good to have <laughs> you. It's been a while since she's been in the building with yeah. us. So, uh, so it's good when the the crew is all back together and we got some new folks and some old folks. So it's definitely it's good. It's a, a nice, good big happy family. Oh my goodness! Like, it's not like Chinese food happy family. <laughs> 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 They got a meal called a happy a Chinese, family. Yeah, they didn't have a happy family combo. Yeah. Speaking of Chinese food, I was on Wikipedia today. Y'all know I spend a lot of time on Wikipedia. That's why I'm so good at parties. But, yeah. Um, there's a dog food festival going on in China right now. I'm sorry, what? Dog food. Not kibble now, for your dog. Food? Yes. Uh, yes. I saw a it's plate bulgogi. decorated, and it was decorated with the tail. Yeah, it's called bulgogi. It's okay. But that's you know, why that's a delicacy. Looking at me like, it's a delicacy as well. You got it's a well. What you eat pigs and you no, eat cows? I don't. No, I don't. You don't eat cow? No. You eat fish? No. Yeah. Tilapia? Oh Lord, no, <laughs> we're not gracious. eating that no more. Why you getting me to the raw okay, so right <laughs> <laughs> we 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 not eating that. Marcus, no more. I didn't mean to uh, hijack. No your man, show, it's, but it's, it's, it's that's so just good. when she talked about the happy family, and then I saw the unhappy dogs on the, <laughs> on the plate. <laughs> How you know he was unhappy? Because so, he was on a plate. Oh, he, he was damn sure unhappy. If you're on a plate, there's no way you're going to be happy. Green. You know, I have to start with Marcus J. Now, when we were talking earlier, Kim, uh, you led me to a, an article that was on my favorite website, which mm-hmm. is known as... The Huffington Post. And this was an odd one because it's a blog... Uh, it's a blog written by a woman named Verna Meyer. She's an author, speaker, activist. And the headline says, why aren't we more afraid of young white men? And she gets into a lot of stuff here. Uh, One of the things that she does is she kind of names some of these young white men who have done some some pretty heinous things, like James Holmes, 27-year-old white male who was found guilty of murder, uh, 12 people and 70 wounded in the Colorado movie theater shooting in 2012. Of course, we know who Dylan Roof is. He's the guy who killed uh, nine, you know, pe- black people in church. Uh, you know, Jokar Sharnayev, uh, who was one of the people who was doing the bombing in Boston. His brother, of course, was killed by the Do police. Do we consider him white? Uh, it, 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 I look Love at him. I mean, he's Russian. Okay, he you thinks know. he's white. Well, he probably he's, he's, he's okay. Russian. If he's Russian, uh, yeah. he's, Caucasoid. he's Russian. Okay, okay. Uh, Caucasoid. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey. Caucasoid. <laughs> All righty. Um, but you know, there's more here, and I don't want to read her blog when we can offer our own opinions. Mm-hmm. But you know, we talked briefly about it. Kim, jump in here. What's your thoughts on this? Well, you know, when I first came across the article, Huffington Post is also one of my favorite uh, sites, and I, I came across the article, and it spoke to me because I always ask. You know, it's a very legitimate question: How are these people not only um, why are we afraid of them, but also every time a young white male does something heinous, disgusting, brutal, they are always, I mean, almost without fail, taken alive. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that too. They don't, they don't well, they might draw their weapons, but they don't shoot them. Right, and, and I mean, we, we talking about people that go in and, and, and shoot up movie theaters. We're talking about Adam Lanza, who was the man who killed 20 children at Sandy Hook Ele- Elementary School in, in Connecticut. 20 children, six adults, and his own mama, and his own mama, his own mama. Mm. He was taken alive, and so you know the 
the pervasive fear in our society of the black man, um, whether he's just walking down the street, whether he's in a business suit. Um, you mean like me? Like you, or if he's you know with his pants hanging off of his behind. We are afraid of black men in any way, shape, or form that we get them, but we have mass murderers taken alive, walked out in handcuffs, Put Going in body King. armor, placed in cars, taken to Burger driven King, driven to Burger King, <laughs> taken to the police station, given a nice comfy cot, three meals, not even the and a broken seatbelt. They gave him the good seatbelt. Yeah, and so it, you know, as a as a black woman, it it worries me. You know, I don't have children, so I can't say I'm worried for my son. But I have a black father, a black brother, a black nephew, and Marcus. I said a black brother. I thought you were talking about about me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Say brothers. Say brothers. Say brothers plural. Okay. I don't want to. Please. Brothers plural. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, but what is going on? And, you know, I I have to be honest that in in our society where these teenagers have so little respect for Hmm. their own lives, much less anybody else's, I do clutch my purse a little tighter and lock my door when I see a group of teenagers walking down the street. But that's any group. Not me. You know what I clutch tighter? An Asian group, a a black group, a white group. Orientals. Oriental is a rug. Yes. No, it's not. It is not a a person. Um, you know, I, I don't. Walk you know, you just called them people the N word, right? Right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't hear you say that. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, well, you with know, I'm politically incorrect, brother. I <laughs> like your your point of view, though. I mean, I'm gonna have to say, but you know, I think that we need to show a little bit more non fear. You know what? And I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna catch some flack, but that turn the damn other cheek stuff. Then got on my damn yeah, nerves. I'm over it. I'm over I'm it. I'm not turning no other cheeks. You know what? Let me tell you. You know what I get? You know what I clutch when I see a group of folk walking down there? What's that? A pistol or a bat. Because, I mean, real talk, I walk right down the middle of them. Hey, it's been a mini oh. day that I have walked with Marcus J, and I'm probably the biggest thing that they walk through, and he get behind me. <laughs> with, right. Marcus J did security. But, but, but that's my point, though. You oh, are six foot go. four. I 290. 290. 290. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 283. Yeah. I came down. Well, I am five, four, and three quarters. Well, it was hot out. House, <laughs> and I cannot feel safe walking in, in the middle of a crowd of any teenagers. But it especially annoys me that. Um, I guess for once, I just want one of these white folks to get shot up by the police. I, I think I'm annoyed that they are taken alive. I, wow. I, I think that it, is it, what annoys well, me. Well, let me, let me just, because I, I have been someone who speaks very, very fervently about that. And there are instances where it happens. Where they have killed white people. Where they have killed white people. Because because, because, because white people will, you know, white people who are sick and tired of hearing us complaining about racism and white privilege. Those white folk, they real quick to tell you about that one or two obscure cases of white people that get killed by the police. So I will say, tongue firmly in cheek with sarcasm on full blast, that it does happen. It, 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 does, it does happen. But it rains when it I, doesn't. It, it, uh, yeah, occasionally. <laughs> but, but when I see this article, I'm very much intrigued by it. Because I'll give you another example. Because of how we are trained by the media to think and see certain things based upon how it's portrayed for us, when we see a white person go into a church and kill a bunch of people, no one ever wants to utter the word terrorism. When we see a man of Middle Eastern descent go into a military place and shoot up, the first thing you're going to hear is we're investigating this as domestic terrorism. And they mad because they cannot find anything that directly connects this guy to any of that stuff. So when I see, I'll give you an example. I'll back up because I was getting ready to tell you a story about a conversation I had. Let me go right back there. We were talking about the DC sniper. Mm-hmm. And nobody thought that that was black dudes. Nobody. Nobody, yeah, nobody thought that those was black dudes. What did we think they were? White. We thought they were young to white. middle-aged white, white men. Yeah. Because white people go into places and shoot up shit. 
And, and that's what that's just what we think. That yeah, exactly. So why aren't we afraid of young white men? Because how many black men in Detroit are killing thousands of people, or not thousands, but p- killing Let's lots of people thousands compared thousands to one person that walks into a movie theater, compared to one person that walks into a school? How many of these black men on the street are killing in Chicago, Detroit? No, that's a fair question. But my, my response to that question would be. For all the white folk that's so scared of black people, how many of these black people are killing white folk? Right. <laughs> you that's know? Sad, it's though. even deeper than these white adult males who are doing these things. When, when, when you read this article, it says black boys as young as 10 may not be viewed in the same light of childhood innocence as their white peers, but are instead more likely to be mistaken as older, be perceived as guilty, and face police violence if accused of a crime. And we've seen it. Police officers go into a school because a black child has done something, and they put a child in handcuffs. Or the child that um, was doing the wrestling moves that killed the... Right. The young child that's now on death row or something. But like, like that, that yeah. is that that should be concerning for everybody that has a black child or a black nephew or a black grandchild that your child is automatically perceived as more violent, as less less even capable of innocence. So what the, what you saying is that my baby popped out gun in hand ready to wipe somebody. Yeah. That's exactly what's being said. Just like you know, a lot of these kids, some of these white kids that you see at these KKK rallies popped out good and ready to hate everybody who is not white and Protestant. Hey, well, can I, can I add something that's really funny to this? You know, doing security, I've been at a lot of races right here in Richmond at RIR. Right. You can go to, now this is, this is the acceptable practice at the racetracks. They tell you that you can bring a cooler into the racetracks and you can bring a maximum of 24 beers. They don't care how you bring them, right? <laughs> they have kids with coolers walking around. So every person can bring Every person. They got, beers. yes. Children, I'm talking about kids. I'm talking about, I've seen kids drinking in Henrico County but we can't at go RIR. With you, our own food and beverage. No, no, no. We better not even take a bottle of water you know. unless it's sealed. It and our own people they treat us like that. They don't, they don't, <laughs> well, that's because we want to make money on it. But, yeah. you know, I'm just saying, you, you think about the way that whole, that, you let us go to Stone Soul that was out there and take a cooler with full of, with, with 24 oh, beers. What's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the definitions of white privilege is having the privilege of not knowing that you benefit mm-hmm. from white privilege. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I say it in a convoluted way, but think about what I just said but there for a minute. But that's the whole definition that's of the, that's white the, privilege. Yeah, that's that's the point. If you ask the white people that you know, are they privileged? Of course They're going to say no. Yeah, of course Because they, they don't realize that the whole system was built around them to service them. Right. And so this is just how it's always been for them. Right, right. They don't have to think about being white. Well, I think a lot of times all you have to do is have someone um, of color benefit uh, in an area where that individual, and I won't say generally because it's not fair to speak generally, but uh, you see the privilege and the bigotry come out in their response oftentimes so I think that you know you may be on to something Terry is still listening to us she says uh, she's speaking of the shooting at the naval uh, office recruitment office when the prerequisite for declaring domestic terrorism is the fact that the location of the attack was military is defined as an attack on the government so that's uh, an example of why it should have been basically uh, said as, as, as terrorism from the from the spot. I think we use the word terrorism. You know, the natural inclination is to think of someone that's from the Middle East, and so I think that's a big part of the reason why. You know, that's there was a reluctance. But what does terrorism mean? Well, the, well, there was a re- and I'm gonna define it. There was a reluctance to attach that word okay. to Dylan Roof because he terrorized, he terrorized those exactly. people. He instilled fear in them. And we can look up, you know, what Webster says and all the other dictionaries, but we know what terrorism means. We know what terrorist is. Right. But again, 
We got to follow the media and we got to follow who's running the media, who's controlling the media. When we hear the word terrorist, no one's thinking of a white man walking into a school and killing babies. That's terrorism. We're not thinking of a white man walking into a movie theater and killing people who couldn't wait to go see the new Batman. All of us want to, this is that movie we all excited to go see. Imagine that being right here in our town. That's terrorism. But because he's not Middle Eastern, because he doesn't have kinky hair, because he's not praying to Allah and kneeling to the East, it's not terrorism. That's white privilege. But he's and that, a snake charmer and walking around kissing snakes <laughs> and throwing Bibles and burning crosses. Oh, my goodness. Hey, don't ask that, bro. J. Kim, you said earlier that we're a little bit too serious. So we're going to take down the seriousness <laughs> a little bit. And uh, we 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 get ready to have a little bit of fun. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna present a question to Sy as uh, as mom here. Uh, this one may not be that fun, but I do want to ask this question. This single mom, she was arrested for abandoning her children in the food court huh? while interviewing for a job thirty feet away. I want to know what that's about. Uh, I want to know what your thoughts are on that. Tell me, I don't know if you've heard the story. No, I didn't. In Houston, uh, Houston, Texas, police arrested and later released her. She's accused of abandoning her children at a food court while she interviewed for a job 30 feet away. They said that she left her six-year-old daughter and her two-year-old son while she was interviewing for a job. And when they found the kids, they arrested her for abandonment. Six-year-old daughter and two-year-old son? Yes, she's 30 feet away, which is, if we are to use this room as a point of reference, it is from wall that wall, is probably a little more than that, but yeah. You know, I feel some kind of way about that. Um, be, well, I feel two ways about that. I wouldn't say it's abandonment, number one. I, I can't see it being abandonment. Uh, the problem for me is that she did leave them a six-year-old and a two-year-old. One cannot protect the other. She can't move, <laughs> you're so silly. She can't move fast enough from what she's doing to protect her children. So I see that as my issue, but I definitely don't see it as abandonment. You know, I, 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 don't, I just don't. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, we, we sh she's trying to get a job. Evidently, mm -hmm. she's trying to look out for her children. Mm -hmm. Number one, was she supposed to take her children with her to the interview and have them perhaps mess up a, a opportunity? No, she. They're probably in eyesight. And I don't know how many times I went to South Park Mall and my mom was in Victoria's Secret and I'm sitting out in the middle of the mall waiting for her. You're not Victoria's Secret, Lord, forgive me, Mama. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> mama didn't want you to see what she was. We getting. already know. You don't call your mama out we know you don't mama. call your mama out <laughs> jc pennies i'm gonna say jc pennies and i was in maybe yeah. the i was in the arcade or something now i wasn't six but i knew where the arcade was i was out there hanging i mean if you're gonna say abandonment that should be any age under whatever the supervisory age is in the mall uh, she should have been charged with abandonment for her for me uh joe mm. I don't know what abandonment is. I don't know what abandonment is because my daddy used to make me walk around with my hand in his pocket. <laughs> and I, and my life because you were a special case, though. <laughs> Joe was that kid that had to wear that full body leash or whatnot wrapped around his. <laughs> like now, you a, know what? Like a, That's like funny. Like a damn backpack. <laughs> but my mother sit there. She was no, my because my mother. She was she was furious one day when she actually saw. The kids on a leash. She was like, "Them not. Those are not dogs. Why are they walking around yeah, with on a, leash? on a leash?" But no, I mean, I don't think it was abandonment. I think it might have been a poor decision. Poor decision. You know what I think? Well, first I of think all, Kim, need to calm down. That's what I think. Yeah, Kim, because jump in here. if she's thirty feet away, her children are not out of eyesight. And you know, this came up a couple of months ago. There was some some white children in some neighborhood. I want to say in Maryland, and they were a mile from home, and they were walking to the park. And um, you know, somebody called CPS on the parents. I, I think that we do have to be vigilant over our children, but we're taking things a little bit too far. If you can't be thirty feet away from your child, no, I, I one hundred percent. Especially agree. not. I mean. I don't like to see parents away from their children in parking lots or where moving vehicles, you know, somewhere where they can't put their hand on them. But if I'm 30 feet away from you in an enclosed space, nobody's getting you and getting away. 
I can dig it. I can dig it. I, I 100% agree with you, and I'll even add this to it. I think we live in a country now where we're so litigious that the slightest little thing has to involve law enforcement yeah. and the police. There was a time where a kid could do something crazy and the police would take him home to his mama. But now they, they want to put cuffs on him and they want to take him to jail. And we can draw a line here. We can draw a line to what happens to him when he gets into the system. Once he gets into the system, his name is out there. So the next time he does anything, his consequences may be a little bit harsher. And now he can't go and do the things that he wants to do because he's got that little bit of a record that started because maybe he snatched a piece of gum. You know what I'm saying? And now he can't get a job. Now he's a felon and blah, 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 blah. All of these things can be somewhat connected. Going back to this particular lady, we're talking about 30 feet. 30 feet, really? 30 feet. We gotta lock her up because the kids was 30 feet away from her. When you see that she's a single mom trying to do something that will benefit those kids, now we're gonna take the kids away from her. We're gonna slap her with whatever charges that you can slap her with. Now it's gonna be even more difficult for her to get a job because someone who's gonna be vetting her is gonna see that charge. You know what I'm saying? And so guess what's gonna happen? She's not gonna be able to take care of them. They may end up in the system, and I got to pay for them. Now that's, you got to pay for them. pissing me off. We got to pay I for gotta them. I got to pay for them. Yeah. Well, she could have got a job. Well, I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, I believe now, in the village. Were these angels or were these baby's kids running around taking samples and throwing stuff all over the place? <laughs> the, I article, need to know. the article, the article, the, the article exactly. doesn't, the article doesn't allude to that. But what it does allude to is the fact they were six and two and they were sitting there by themselves. So and, if, if they were sitting there by themselves and they weren't terrorizing, wilding. they weren't wilding. Right. You know what I mean? So I mean, I because don't know. Because Mama had probably said you sit your butt in chair. Yeah, That's I mean, if she's, good, if she's a good, if she's a good mother, you know what I'm saying? Good, you know, <laughs> you get up. You get your butt yeah, in chair. Parry. All you got to do is make the make the face when your lips don't move and you just start talking to her. Well, like yeah. That's, That's how that. our parents had to. Yeah. These kids nowadays, they yeah, special. They well, yeah. <laughs> Man, please, I'll knock a kid cold out <laughs> for real. I, yeah. I will James Evans a kid so quick. For real, ain't no has to have All right, last thing I want to get to in the segment. Uh, we got any animal lovers in the house? We got any animal yes. lovers? You like animals? You got dogs? I like cats, them. You know I what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not laying down my life building, you know, getting no burial plot. If I'm not going to die. Well, let me, let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. We've seen cases and stories and stuff about people leaving children in mm -hmm. hot cars and the children dies and stuff. And, you know, that's bad. If dog. that happened to a dog, say, let's say I left my dog in the car and my dog died, what do you think? Let's just be honest. Forget that you know me and I'm the great person that y'all all know and love. Forget that. I'm just some knucklehead on television that you saw on the news who left the dog in the car and the dog died. Honestly, just be honest with me. What you think should happen to me? Kyra, please don't be screaming in the house right now. Because my daughter's listening. She's having a fit right now on that question. Um, you know, there are, animals are protected just like people are protected. You, you are going to be punished. You are going to be punished for it. Okay. Now, how severe your punishment is going to be, you kill the dog. That's almost Ask like Michael Vick what happened when you oh, kill a dog. But the, yeah, that was going to be my <laughs> question. Kill a dog. It's that, almost like killing the person. Well, I mean, You're going when, to when be did, in trouble. When did dogs, cats, animals, dogs particularly, when did they become on the same level as a human's life? Not so much that they're on the same level, but they're but people protected are getting just arrested as much. Or, or fined. Says who? Well, I've never seen where someone got busted for doing something to an animal and was not punished. Okay. I mean, I, I personally, I don't want to see anything suffer. Yeah. So if it's a dog, you know, and you leave it in the car, oh, I'm gonna cry. On purpose, I think there should be some consequences. On purpose or on accident, as a kid would say. Well, it's it's kind of hard to leave. It's it's actually easier to leave a kid on accident than it is to leave a dog. But but let me, I mean, it, let me let me just get to the point because there's a reason why I'm asking the question. So let's just go around the room. Uh, let's do, let's just let's just go around the room, Joe. Should there be consequences for me in this instance? Yes. Okay. Should those consequences include jail or just fines and stuff like that? I don't think it, it induces jail. But I, there should be 
some sort of there legal should be some consequence. Type of legal for me. consequence. Okay, that's some why. Type of penance. That's why. Sir. Should there be any legal consequence for me for for leaving the dog in the car and the dog dies? The dog. Today would be nice. <laughs> Kim, yeah. would there be any <laughs> consequence? Because yes. this one here. I mean, yes. yeah, there should be. I just don't want to make it so bad, but yeah, there should be. Okay, Kim? Yes, there, there should be a consequence. All right, bless. I, I've had animals. I love my animals. I took them everywhere with me, but I'm from the country. I'm from where they tied dogs up to trees, and they were the protectors outside, and that's where they belong. So I'm, I just don't see where they're on the same level as humans. I, I, oh here's, here's, here's why I'm asking a question. Here's why I'm asking a question. Because a police officer left his canine partner in the oh, car yeah. and the dog died. He just worked a long shift and he was tired and he didn't feel good when he got home. And so he went straight in the house and he went to sleep. And this is in Conyers, Georgia. And the police said that the five-year-old bloodhound who worked as a tracking dog for the police for four years, three of them, specifically with Williams, uh, was left in the car and died. And so I'm asking, should there be any negative consequences? Because this officer does not appear to be in line to face any. That doesn't change my opinion. Up the flag. I mean, I, I understand better, you know, like you said, he worked a long shift, he was tired. I, I, and like I said, I mean, well, the dog should have barked. That's why I think it's easier to leave a child. Like, you see him walking away. Aren't you trained? Say something. Right. But I do think there should have been, there should be some consequences. Okay. No, I agree. And I think. Maybe that, just a fine. But I, I think the reason why I brought it up and I asked the question the way I asked it is because of the precedent that has been set for how we are to treat animals, especially animals that have, uh, how do I say, uh, that are pets, you know what I mean? Like you can go out and shoot Bambi all you want, but you can't, you know, let your dogs fight each other. I'm not sure I understand that one, but that's kind of the way it goes. And so I'm curious to know if this police officer is going to suffer any negative consequences. Well, think about it like this. If the police officer, and it was his partner, it's his partner. which means he was a police officer as well. Yes. It was, just a, it was a murder of another police yeah, officer. Yeah, because, I mean, and you can you can laugh, listeners, all you want about that, but if you are in serious. law enforcement, they take that very serious. Oh, yeah. If you if you are walking, if that police officer has his dog and something happens to that dog that you Man did, down. I, the, yeah. They say man down. Yeah. They've had funerals yeah. for him and everything. Wait, they say man down for the dog? Yes. It's not dog down? <laughs> He's an officer of the law. <laughs> Maybe they say but, dog down. They will give you first degree murder charges for killing down. a dog. Yes. A dog man down. Yeah. But yeah. a dog does not have the same value as a human life. He does if he's a police officer. I guess, you know, they're all sorry, blue. That's why I can't. I, dog, animals don't. I, well, I love my dog. That's about to get somewhere that we probably don't want to go. But, you know, in my opinion, animals do not have souls. So he can't have oh the same God. value. No, I can, uh, you uh, know. As, as a yeah, human I'm life. Sure. And, and again, I don't, I'm not saying I want to see a dog mistreated. But. It's not the same. It's not the same. No, I can dig it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the den of Legacy Internet Radio. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, that's why it's going to lead us in our next segment. I don't know what the hell we're going to talk about. She always be coming up in here with her stuff and stuff. And she don't even tell me. You would think the host of the show would know what we're about to do, but she don't tell me nothing. That's why. Are you going to tell me now what we're going to be doing in the next segment? We about to drink. Oh, I can well, do yeah. that. Well, let's do this. All right, well, let's get through this break real quick. Ain't no hashtag Mark J. Live in the Dan Legacy. Everybody be back in a minute. <laughs> 